What's up guys, Richard Ranger Fan here, this time doing a new review of the Power Rangers Mega Force Legendary Megazord figure as well as a little correction I made with uh, my one uh, Power Rangers uh, Mega Force combination the combination with the Delta Runner uh, I'm going to do this real first, you have my Gokaio figure right here from uh, the Robot Chogokin series uh, essentially if you got the uh, Delta the uh, Deca Ranger Robo, you got some added little parts that basically would combine to Gokaio to make them Deca Gokaio. The one mistake I made is there's these small parts right here that combine with the usual weapon with the parts of the body of the Delta Runner, the mini Delta Runner that comes with it. When I first saw this, I thought that basically that you got the gun separately. The gun is actually the weapon itself when you see it and it's flying sideways when it's getting blasted but in actuality the shoulder pad the parts in the shoulder pads which would be this part right here actually pop out into the gun itself and the American version actually had a pig coming down from the bottom of it so let's see here as you can see right there with me opening it up there's a small little tab that you would put this part into and it would pop basically during a battle it would pop out and become a blaster itself with using this little gray pig right here it's a blaster key well in inside here it would use the uh, gold little cannons right here on the wheels I decided to just throw that out there as well as add that in for a little when I do the comparison later essentially the Chogokin Gokaio was about forty to sixty dollars depending on where you bought it when it first came out while well, the Power Rangers uh, legendary Megazord is about what seven to four, thirteen fourteen dollars depending alright on to the Megazord figure itself I'll show a little bit more comparison between the articulation but here it is Power Rangers Megaforce on the very top and I'm sure you can't see it I'm trying to just light a little bit As you can see, Megaforce uh, Red, the figure itself, Legendary Megazord, Choking Hazard warnings, other warnings on the back. You see the figures released, two Retro Fire Megazords will be releasing, or whatever they want to call them, as well as the first wave of figures. Open this guy up and take a look at him a little bit, then I'll come back. Alright, and I'm going to do the uh, articulation for the uh, Super Mega Force figure. First, I'm going to start down the legs. Right down here at the ankle. There's a hinge where you see the screw right there on both of them. Again, uh, also a hinge at the knee. My knees are a little bit more stiff. I'm sure that loosen up with the uh, age. A ball socket at the waist so it can rotate 360 as well as bend only so far out. Up at the arms, the wrist rotates three as far as it can 360. Hinge at the elbow and limit to move a ball socket at the shoulder. As you can see, it goes completely around but can only go so far due to the shoulder pad. Shoulder pads are removable. Okay, I'll change that. The shoulder is a hinge on a rotator. Excuse me, because you see right there, it can only go so high up. 
put that back on. Same thing with the other arm. The waist does rotate. Can go 360. Head does is on a bone socket, so it can go a limited amount. Does that limited amount can move slightly up and down? That's the uh, uh, limited while it does rotate 360. Uh, the figure is missing a lot of paint apps compared to the Japanese version. It's understandable, but also still sucks at the same time. As you can see with the yellow Zord, the majority of it is black. There is actually very lim little yellow paint on it, as well as I do not see the pirate emblem on it on the side. Look at the front. Well, it's the same thing they did for the Megazord as well. It's very small, but you cannot see the paint inside the uh, cockpit for the, uh, I want to call it Treasure Chest Zord. And as well as they really didn't bother to make any wheels on the back, because they won't be used for anything. And it's about the same thing for the Ping Zord. He didn't paint in the middle of the gold circle on the foot. That should have been black, where it's gold right there. Uh, the majority of the Zord is supposed to be white, but again, it's all black. It's understandable, as I said before, but it still sucks. Uh, painting on the waist. Uh, let's see here. It's supposed to have gold down tread on the sides, but does not. Right up here is supposed to be a little bit of red. Uh, let's see here. Onto the arm swords. Take the short sword out. It's again a case of lack of paint. As you can see right there, the tip of the Power Ranger sword is is all green. Well, the Japanese sword has the gold on the tip for the blaster weapon as well as a little stripe right there. The tires on it on the American version are a good solid black while the Japanese actually has the uh, hubcaps of the tires painted. Let's see if we can get this down in here. Right there you can see on the shoulder pad where it would open up usually for anything else for the combination attacks that has a black and the pirate emblem on it. While the American version only is all painted a solid green color. For the weapons, basically for the American version, the weapons are the same thing. They just move the peg to the other side. They're the same diameter, same width. They just also the peg. Well, the Japanese version, you can see a difference between the two weapons. Obviously, the one has the uh, sail for the front of the Zord. There's no peg on them, as well as actually a bright color silver compared to this dulled out, sorry, dulled out gold and silver. Back onto the Zords, I just broke it up to change to show you that. Onto the blue Zord. Sorry, just noticing how uh, thin the uh, binding is for the so when you have it out. Sorry about that. Back onto it. Essentially, you look at the blue zord. You can see right off the bat, they're missing the silver paint right there. Uh, turns on the side. Again, the pirate emblem right there. You see on Gokayo. Back to the front. Again, the lack of paint on the tail, on the back fin for the Zord with the pirate emblem in the black. It's just a good solid blue color. The chest piece, well, the red Zord and head. Essentially, the uh, parts right here are just part of the shoulder pads. Limited amount of paint on them. As you can see right there, it's majority of it's black. 
with some red on the bottom. Silver right there for the cannons. Top is all black. Oh, you see on the Gokai L, you see the part of the sternum. Sorry, sorry, I forget the uh, term around that, but I think it's the stern of the ship. The gold right there is all encasing all the way around. Black on top, the cannons, the gold. And you can see the turns right there. That might be one thing that they missed. I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be painted black, but it's fine. Then onto the red zord. Basically, as you can see right there, not very much, only red in two spots. Uh, the silver right there. Sorry, the gold right there. I don't like keep calling it silver. Just reminds me of a dull silver, I guess. But they got the gold uh, emblem very well done right there. The helmet. Helmet's actually done pretty good. They actually have it all the way colored in. So right there, the gold on the side. The silver right there, red with a little speck of silver, which I'm guessing is just a mistake by it. Back of the helmet. And the Gokal. Looks like they missed something on the American version. I didn't realize that. Red right there for the back of the helmet. Yeah, that's about it for those two. Again, if you can't afford it, get the American version. You can customize it very easily. But if you got the money, you can find one. Go the Japanese version. It's many times better. As well as it comes with the special little uh, strike uh, air blast that you can attach to the back of the swords. Make sure you get that with it. All right, then I'll bring back be back a little bit with the one little. Di
Okay, on to the next part, which is about the Retro Fire Megazord line itself. First thing I'm going to say, as you can see right now, I have the combination uh, Deca Ranger, Deca Gokaio. You can see the gun cannons right down here in the lower part, his little hand blasters in his hand. And the patrol car's chest piece in his chest. Uh, sorry, back to everything else. Uh, the Vectral Fire Alliance started in 2009. It started with uh, RPM basically releasing two of the four Megazord, main Megazords, the High Octane and the Valve Max, as well as the classic Megazords being the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Megazord, Wild Force Megazord, Dino Thunder, Thunder Swords Megazord, and Mystic Force Titan Megazord. They had three other Megazords released, but unfortunately they were limited distribution in the UK. The Mach Megazord, Paleomax Megazord, and Time Force Mode Red Megazord. The figures themselves gave your kids gave kids uh, something the Megazords can fight against. Instead of having this big huge 10 to 14 inch tall robot fighting against 6 inch uh, Kelzaks or something like that, they essentially gave out this. They could give out this line to have them fight against the monsters and do whatever. Uh, the next year was the horrible 2010 re-showing of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers season one from 1993, with the cartoony 1970s or 60s. I'm pretty sure 70s. Adam West Batman pop-up comic effects. You know the pal. Bonk, Zoink. The Retro Fire line continued, and during this season, they released three new Megazords and re released the Mighty Morphin Megazord. The new Megazords were the SPD Delta Megazord, the Zeo Megazord from Power Rangers Zeo, and Power Rangers Jungle Fury, Jungle Pride Megazord. As much as I hate getting the re release of the Mighty Morphin, it was understandable for that year because that was the key Megazord for that series. On to the next, basically we came to Power Rangers Samurai. This is when Saban brought back Power Rangers Company and I want to say if Bandai got a, a little lazy. I'm not talking about the quality of reduce, the quality of the figures or reducing the size of the Megazords. Those are understandable. But basically what they did with the Retro Fire line. Retro Fire line, they re-released the Mighty Morph, uh, Mystic Force Megazord, SPD Megazord, Jungle Fury, and Power Ranger Zeo during the first year, as well as only allowed for one Megazord for that year, would be the Samurai Megazord. It came out late in that year, or beginning of Super Mega Force, as well as at the end of Super Mega Force, basically during the second year, I want to say midsummer, they finally released the Claw Zord and did a re-release of the High Octane Megazord. Then near to that basically came Super Mega Force, sorry, Mega Force. They did a little better this year. Basically they only released four Mega four Retro Fire Megazords. The Ghost State Great, Ghost State Ground, and Ghost State Ultimate. As well, unfortunately, they re-released the Mighty Morph Megazord. It sucked, but it was a little understandable it being the 20th year. That would be the third release of the Mighty Morph Megazord with the Retro Fire line. Now now we're starting to get into, now we're up to the present and currently as you can see they released the Super Mega Force Legendary Megazord which I will be just referring to as Gokaio. They released Gokaio and now I guess sooner uh, during the second wave of release for Retro Fire they'll be releasing the Dino Thunder Megazord and I believe they already released the Wild Force Megazord again. I don't recall seeing anything for whatever they're going to call Goryujin, the basically the Silver Ranger Zord in Warrior Mode. But basically here's my home entire problem in Retro Fire line right now. They're releasing, re-releasing all the old Zords continuously. Mighty Morphin, Wild Force, RPM, uh, Mystic Force and SPD and Zeal. 
I like the Zords and all, but that leads to the problem of not getting anything new out. I mean, they could release an Astro Megazord from Power Rangers in Space, Lost Galaxy Megazord, Lightspeed Rescue Megazord, or even re-release of the ones that only the UK got, the Paleo Max, the Mach, and Time Force Mold Red. I've only seen Mold Red on eBay currently. I looked at it about half an hour ago, with today being uh, March 1st at about 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the USA. For $40, I can get the Time Force Mold Red, but without the saver from Japan. That's not, that's without including shipping. As well as another one basically will really probably be around the same price with the sword. That's $80 just to get one figure complete. And I have never seen uh, the Paleo Max and the Mach Megazord for sale. Give all those figures to be released maybe as a three pack for everybody in the United States, all the larger fans that they have. Or even go above and beyond and add new Megazords. Ninja Storm, uh, Operation Overdrive, uh, Seasons 2 and 3 of Mighty Morphin, Turbo. They still have plenty more seasons they can add Megazords in, even the main Megazords, or go wild and basically make a Dragon Sword for the Retro Fire line, since we're getting one pretty soon with the Legendar uh, Legacy line. It's just something like that, even if they're doing it cheaply would make fans love it even more, enjoy it. They're great toys to have if you're going to have, ha have the all-out legendary war. Don't just release the key Megazords, I mean... Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Wild Forest basically was 10 year anniversary. Mighty Morphin was year one. Uh, Operation Overdrive was year 15. Uh, Mega Force is year 20. That's fine. You can do those Megazords in a set, but don't continuously just be showing them out. It gets re redundant. Kids are going to have them, or even new kids aren't going to care about them, but if you release a new Megazord, that gives kids wonder what this Megazord was, what what they did, what that season did. It gives them reasons to get the other seasons. But that's just my opinion being a older fan as well as a collector for the series. Alright guys, Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry about the little rant at the end. But I figured you had to get out. Hopefully they do release something new for the Retro Fire line. Or whatever they want to call it now. The Meg uh, Megazord figure line. Alright, that's Richard Ranger Fan, a.k.a. Buster Sir 275. Later.